Folks, folks, I've, I've got, got, got three questions, questions, for you. questions for you. What are you doing here? How does a billiard ball like this one move? And why does a pencil in a glass of water look broken? And now this is the question that's probably the most bizarre, that you probably never even thought to ask. How do shadows work? Why do you see a shadow behind my finger in this video? It turns out all three of those questions are connected. How does a billiard ball work? Why does a pencil look broken in a glass of water? And how do shadows work? All three of these questions boil down to one phenomena, light itself. To understand the answers to these questions, we must first understand how light behaves. How does light move? How does it dance through the world? And so to understand that, we're going to cover the three properties of light. That it travels in straight lines, that it reflects in equal angles, and it refracts via Snell's law. Let's hit the blackboard. There are three properties of light. The first one is that it travels in a straight line. Let's check that out. So, if you're looking at some object, let's say a building, and you're looking at some point on the building, let's call that point B, and your eye, let's call that point A. The fastest way to get from point A to point B is, as we all know, a straight line. That's why light travels in a straight line from point A to point B. Now, there's a caveat. What is a consequence of this fact? Well, if I have some kind of a bright light source, let's say I have some kind of a light source, some kind of a, a uniformly projecting light sphere, right over here, projecting light in all directions in front of the building. What's going to happen? Well, the building is going to block some of the light from reaching the, this backboard, right? In fact, the building is going to block all the light, all the light rays that are within its perimeter. And so what are you going to have on this back, uh, on this back surface, you're going to have a kind of shadow. You're going to have a shadow in the shape of the building. And hence, that's why we have shadows. Shadows occur when an object obstruct some light rays from a source. And so you have a kind of absence of light behind that object, what's known as a shadow. Wow, that's a lot of refots, a lot of me's. But all of them are just being reflected off one another. How does reflection work and what's the mathematical equation that describes it? Let's go ahead and hit the chalkboard. All right, so you saw me being reflected an infinite number of times on a balloon, but how does reflection actually work? Let's say you have a mirror, something like this, and you wanna shoot a laser at this mirror. At some point, let's say you wanna shoot the laser at this point, we'll call it A. And so that's the perpendicular to our mirror at that point. You'll see why I drew that perpendicular very shortly. Now, I'm going to aim my laser, which is now in the form of a yellow chalk, at this point. Let's see what happens. Now you saw my laser came in at some angle. We'll call that angle theta i for angle of incidence. Now it turns out the laser is going to bounce off. It's going to reflect at exactly the same angle. We'll call that theta r. In other words, theta i is always going to be equal to theta r. The light ray is always going to come out at the same angle that it came in. This right here is the magical law of reflection. And this is how light rays always reflect. Now you might think, if that's how light rays reflect, why is my left hand and my right hand switched in a mirror? I'll leave you to think about that and leave your answers in the comments down below. But for now, we're going to move on to the third property of light, refraction. I've got a glass and a pencil. What happens if I put some water in this glass? Now check out what happens to the pencil. It's going to start looking as if it's getting broken by water. I think that's enough water for now. You'll see that the pencil looks as if it's broken as soon as it enters the water. But something's wrong. 
Your brain's telling you, how can water break a pencil? But your eyes are telling you, this pencil is definitely broken. What's going on? Well, what's going on is light. Light has to slow down when it gets to water. Water is like a traffic jam for light, right? So when light enters the water, which has a refractive index of 1.33, which is higher than the refractive index of air at one, light has to bend. It has to bend towards the normal and thus slow down. And in fact, if you take the pencil out of the water, you'll see it's not broken at all. It was just an illusion, an illusion caused by the speed of light. What you just saw is known as refraction. Refraction can be described very simply using Snell's law, n1 sine theta 1 equals n2 sine theta 2. But don't be deceived. Even though the law looks simple, it took more than 2,000 years to discover. Even genius minds like Kepler failed to discover the law that describes refraction mathematically. Remember, Euclid discovered the principle of reflection in 300 BC. And then 2,000 years later, that's how long it took in the space between hundreds, maybe thousands of genius mathematicians tried to crack the problem of refraction. But none could do it until the 1600s when a young man named Willebrod Snellius, who by the way had no other significant discovery, discovered Snell's law, which is n1 sine theta 1 equals n2 sine theta 2. All right, folks, you've seen that light travels in straight lines. It bounces in equal angles. But have you seen that it refracts via Snell's law? Okay, Snell's law discovered by none other than Mr. Snell, whose first name is Hitherto Unknown. Actually, it was Willebrod, but no one actually cares about that. What matters is his simple but compact law which took more than 2,000 years to discover. Even geniuses like Kepler failed to discover the law that dictates refraction. But this unknown mathematician, Willebrod Snellius, discovered Snell's law, which states that n1 sine theta 1 is equal to n2 sine theta 2. What does this mean? Every high school student learns this but they don't know why this works. We'll cover that in the next episode. But for this episode, we're at least gonna check out how this works. What this equation is telling us is that if water tries to travel between two mediums, all right, we'll call the first medium N1 and we'll call the second one N2. Let's say the first medium is air. It has an index of refraction of one. The second medium might be water, which has an index of refraction of 1.3. Now, what happens? What happens? Well, let's draw the perpendicular to the surface that cuts between the two mediums. When light enters, when it first hits the water-air boundary, it's gonna bend because water is a traffic jam, as you saw in the pencil that looks broken. And so the light ray is gonna bend. It's gonna bend to the normal. It's gonna slow down. And hence, you have something that looks like this. This is refraction in a nutshell. So, now you understand what refraction is, what reflection is, how light travels in straight lines. Now, you might be thinking, how is any of this related to billiards? Well, I'm gonna leave that for the next episode. But hopefully you learned something. Hopefully you learned how reflection and refraction and how shadows and how broken pencils are all related. We'll see you in the next episode. Is memorization is a crime, and that's why we partnered with Brilliant.
Brilliant transforms math and science into hands-on activities so that you too can understand everything from first grade math to E equals MC squared. Barry Science Lab and Brilliant is your MKO and will give you the scaffolding to expand your ZPD until you become the next Sir Isaac Newton or Albert Einstein. Visit brilliant.org slash Barry Science Lab today. The first 50 of you to use that link will get a 20% discount on the Brilliant annual subscription. Don't, Don't forget, forget that, that you too can, can become, become the next Einstein. Einstein. So, so let's, let's fall in love, love with math and science. science.